Farm for Profit Podcast. Take a listen, have a blast. Farm for Profit Podcast. Learn about farming while having a laugh. Farm for Profit Podcast. Hey, listeners, welcome back to the Farm for Profit Podcast. You got Tanner here, David here, and Corey. Uh, you guys are cute. You're well, matching we don't ever know. shirts. We, yeah. Mine's tucked in, though. I look more professional than oh. he does. Is that, is that what we're supposed to do? Is tuck in our shirts now? I don't know. Tanner was wearing the fancy white belt. It's a golf course. I just followed his etiquette. I know. Well, yeah. that's why mine's not tucked in, because I only have a brown belt, and it doesn't really match with what I got going. We have a blue shirt on. But I got gray pants. I felt like a oh. bra- black Did you or get white. dressed in the dark this morning? Kind of. <laughs> kind of. Well, actually, I didn't have this on when I got dressed this morning. I threw it on right when I got here. Oh, that's, I appreciate you doing that for our guest today. Yep. Our, our person of royalty here, you got dressed up for him. I'm excited. Uh-huh. Yeah. Listeners, this is a Farm for Fun episode. If you've never listened to Farm for Profit before, we put two shows out a week. Monday is a profit show. Thursday is the fun show. Uh, all the way, we try to be entertaining and give you a little something to walk away with on the education side. You can contact us, 515-207-9640, if you want to send me a text or a voicemail. I get to Let see us know them what you think of our guests today. I get to see them all. Yeah. Uh, or if you've got other guest suggestions, we, we absolutely love those. But my favorite part about Farm for Fun shows is getting Corey fired up to introduce our guests. And I get to do it with no music today. No, You're going to overlay got the music. music. And we want to make sure this is done the right way. Okay. So why don't you fire up? All right. And, uh, let our guest get. I can throw some Spotify on if you want. <laughs> do you like beatbox for me, Dave? <laughs> no, wait. No. We've got someone here that could probably uh, do that. Yes. Uh, yes, <laughs> maybe. All right. We even uh, have some musical instruments. We're probably not supposed to play them. but Yeah, he could probably play those, too. All, All right. right here we away. go. Today on the Farm for Fun show from the 2024 John Deere Classic, we meet up with a man that has been the center of a lot of attention here this June. He has a knack for the arts where he sings, raps, writes songs, and makes wax sculptures. A recent college graduate thrown into the dream job of John Deere's chief tractor officer in which he kicked Dave and Mai's butt. Yes, he did. Very, very much so. We are here to ask him some tough questions and see if he can live up to the hype. It is my pleasure to introduce... John Deere's first ever CTO from Oakland, California. Please welcome Mr. Rex Curtis. Yeah. That's where you're supposed to clap over there. That's, 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 yeah. We do have an audience in yeah, studio. Well, thank you guys so much for having me here. Yeah. I got to be honest. This is my first podcast ever. Ever? Ever. Really? Oh, yeah. what? Even best, though, best one to be on. Yeah. Even though you got the, the you're a Gen, I'm assuming you're a Gen Z. How old are you? I'm 22 years 22. old. 22. That's Gen wow, Z, right, right off the bat. Oh, just yeah. boom. How old and, are you? But I mean- He's a musician. He's talented. He's in the arts. I figured you probably had like three podcasts. No, I've been busy with school. Yeah. Honestly, I feel like I got dressed up for you guys to be on this show. <laughs> yeah, I like it. Well, we might be spoiling you. If this is your first podcast, I doubt there's very few that are just like us. I guarantee it will be your, your easiest podcast. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. You just threatened him in your introduction saying we're going to ask hard questions. We ask everyone <laughs> tough questions. Oh, okay. Right? That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah. yeah. Right? Okay. So Corey introduced you. How do you introduce yourself? My name is Rex Curtis. I am the new CTO of John Deere. I'm very humbled to be in this position. I'm very excited. Uh, I'm going to be learning a lot this year from those around me in this industry, and I'm excited to help tell their stories in the most creative way possible. So before we get into how you got to CTO, let's just go back to little Rex, like what was your life growing up? I heard you had maybe a little tie to ag. What, what, what's going on there? Yeah, so I grew up in East Bay, California, which is about 45 minutes east of San Francisco. Very small town, a uh, little bit, bit of a ranching town. So we were surrounded by a valley with cattle all around us. Cool. Um, so I spent a lot of time growing up in nature. Uh, we're right in the redwood forest, like kind of in the heart of it in California. So I leave my backyard and I'm in the hills for miles on end. So I've always been very passionate about the environment and animals uh, and in terms of my family background. So my family came here in about 1891 from Sicily and then began farming the Central Valley. Mm-hmm. And then about 1970, they sold that land and moved up north uh, Sacramento uh, and now continue the operation there. But during my grandma's generation, they split off and now it's just my cousins who continue this line of work. So what are they growing? So they grow Anything from melons, cashews, um, apples, almonds, the whole. 26 different crops. I love cashews. I'm going to have to. Mm. 
get his family's number there and get a direct line. So we got a, a taste for California ag. We got to go to the World Ag Expo this spring, uh, Mountain Tulare, California. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was, what they say, over 200 crops in that valley. Yeah. Um, amazing. You just, the diversity in ag mm -hmm. is, is so cool out there. And then we got to go drive up into the Redwoods and see General Sherman and all yeah. that kind of stuff. It, yeah. It's pretty cool. Well, even in the Bay Area, I get to go out there every once in a while and do an auction event. And uh, it is a diverse city. There are people from everywhere. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. So, did you ever get involved on the farm at all or just no? Just enough to know about it. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. All right, so let's jump into how did you get this role of CTO? So my older brother actually sent me the position via text. I had not seen it on my own. I wondered and, how you came across it. And he said, dude, this looks like the perfect role for you. You got to apply. And so it goes even deeper. His freshman year roommate, like six years ago in college at the University of Indiana, IU, he works at Deer now. And then sent it in a group chat as a joke. Like, look yeah. at this funny position that my company's doing. And then my brother was like, oh. Yeah. Sent it off to my little huh. brother. <laughs> Saw it and applied for it. And here I am. And you didn't have any other jobs lined up? It just happened to be perfect timing or what? Yeah. I mean, I was really coming down to the end of my college career. And I was having a lot of conversations with people more in the marketing sphere. Uh, I was trying to go into influencer marketing, mm -hmm. either you know at an agency or corporate. And this popped up right in the vein of what I was trying to do, but hmm. way more fun, obviously. Yeah. Go, going uh, into influencer yeah. marketing. So what was your degree in? My degree was in environmental studies, and then I minored in business. And then all of the influencing stuff I did uh, by myself. Kind of on the side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had to take environmental studies as part of our curriculum at Iowa State. You know, if you were mm -hmm. in ag studies and mm -hmm. hated that class. <laughs> 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 right, but you do see uh, – it, the route that a lot of people in influencer marketing take is, you know, they do it on the side, yep. at least the biggest ones. I mean, you can go to school for marketing. You can't really go to school for social media marketing because it's, it hasn't been around long enough to make to, a curriculum. Yeah. To have a whole course about that. Uh, and the landscape is changing so quickly. So yeah. if you're not actively on social media all the time and creating, I mean, you guys know you're, yeah. yep. you're doing it a lot that, I mean, we've, we've done this podcast. I mean, we had no knowledge of making podcasts beforehand. We've learned everything organically by ourselves, even working with brands. You know, we don't know what to charge or what an impression costs or anything like that. And, you know, we were way too cheap, I know, to we're, begin with. And we're just – the the best route that we've gone to have success is we're just open about it. You yeah. know, we don't tell people we don't know what we're doing, but – we explain to them that this is a journey together. We, mm -hmm. get, we get to learn about all of this. You know, we're here at a golf tournament. We've never set up and recorded at a golf tournament before, but we've already had some really great conversations, and we can't wait to go walk the course. Who'd have thought, hey, let's go walk? Yeah. Yeah. This is something we want to do. No, yeah, we, we were even it. excited to walk down here, even though they said that's so far away. And <laughs> uh -huh. like, no, we'll get you a cart. Like, oh, okay. Which I'm kind of glad they did. Yeah. yeah. It was a long ways. Okay, so your brother sent you the position, mm -hmm. and uh, right away it seemed like something you wanted to do. Oh, yeah, immediately. Did you know much about John Deere before? Not a whole lot about John Deere, at least on the equipment side, but everyone's heard of John Deere, yep. right? at least so I thought. Um, but it was more about my background, and I had worked in sustainability for a long time, and I had been passionate about local food systems. That's mm -hmm. what I worked with in mm -hmm. school for the past couple of years. And I thought I had the creative experience as well as uh, – some college experience that made me a pretty good candidate for it. And so you came you, up with a pretty dang good jingle too, right? Yeah. So what was, yeah, yeah, what was that it. process like? Cause you're, you're sitting there going, okay, I have one shot. 60 seconds. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So my thought process was I do all these different creative things. How can I package them into one 60 second video that that's coherent enough to drive home a main point, but still, has a little hints of everything I can do. So I knew probably nobody's going to make a song. Uh, I've been making music for seven years and singing and mostly writing. So that was totally in my wheelhouse to incorporate. I picked up sculpting. So I thought I got a sculpt tractor in this as well. And I have a background in sustainability. So I kind of touched on that point. I, this song was really driving home my mission statement uh, while incorporating all these things. I don't think I had a mission statement at 22. No. 
It might have been to drink more next weekend. Yeah. <laughs> how can I get enough money last. to go to the bar? Yeah. 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 How, how can I make it so my head doesn't hurt tomorrow? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I did my research as well. Yeah. Like before before I wrote this song, I mean, I... If you're looking to boost your harvest efficiency this season, look no further than Brandt. All of their grain cart options are designed with you in mind, from unmatched durability to innovative features that make unloading easier and faster. Not to mention their unique large footprint track configuration that reduces field compaction and increases flotation throughout your field. They're the hardest working, most efficient units in the industry. Brandt grain carts are here to be built to keep you running smoothly. Visit Brant.ca today to learn more information and see why farmers across North America trust Brant. That's Brant.ca for more information. Strong, reliable, built to last. I bought The John Deere Way, which is a book written, I think, in about 2005. Mm -hmm. Kind of detailing the history. Read through that and then did a ton of research online about what their mission statement is, what their values are, and you know, what they're trying to do with this position. And you really had to read in between the lines Mm -hmm. of that application to figure out what Corey can't read it all. So let alone, (laughs) I I actually read it because I did, I did uh, apply. Now, shortly after I applied, Jen Hartman contacted me and she said, this is, this is uh, information that no one knows. So this is exclusive right here. Breaking. I was not actually eligible because John Deere, already works with us on the podcast is what she told me. And I, I kind of said, well, I, I actually don't technically own the podcast. Tanner does. I'm just an employee. She's like, Oh, I'll have to talk to our lawyers at that point. If lawyers are being said, <laughs> you're probably not, <laughs> you're not getting touched by John Deere. <laughs> I'm telling you that right now. But she was like, but you could just continue to make content. Of course. Yeah. You can make content for free for us. Uh-huh. But I'm like, well, that'll drive, you know, eyeballs back to the podcast yeah. and all that. Yeah. And so I set out to do like a campaign you know, oh, and, and I, tell like, about the realization that you had because you thought it was going to be a 20 day campaign. It was supposed to originally when we interviewed Jen, it was supposed to be before we interviewed Jen, it was supposed to be picked like May 18th or something like that. <laughs> and then we're interviewing Jen. She's like, oh, yeah, we pushed that back uh, to like mid June. I'm like, oh, my gosh, because we had a brainstorming session to come up with a new uh, a, a new thing to promise because it was this. You know, oh, yeah. Campaign I've got promises. a whole sheet. Yeah. And we came up with 20 because we knew we had 18 days. She's so like, okay, mm-hmm. we're going to come up with 20, and you picked the best 18. And when she said that, we went, mm-hmm. oh, crap. You have yeah. way more days. We have a lot more promises to yeah. make. I will say, I mean, I had traction. As soon as I announced that I was going to bring back John Deere snowmobiles, all of a sudden, John Deere snowmobile swag was back on <laughs> shop.deer.com. Um, I started seeing, you know, little blurbs of it. Oh, and the uh, rumor started coming out that they're buying it, so – That'd be awesome if that happens, but yeah. really, so you got that? You think you I'm gonna, I'm gonna claim, corporate? I'm gonna claim that. <laughs> I mean, it's probably not true at all, but it just happened to, to be like three Perfect. days after yeah. I, uh-huh. I said that. Uh, I don't know if that's a coincidence. <laughs> I know, well, some, I've got some when, influence. When you talk about coincidence, though, I'm, I'm impressed that you know your application wasn't just on a whim. Like you legitimately put effort and time and research into it. It's not. Uh, not like Dave's, where he just did his in a, a whim. A whim? Well, was it, was, it was a pretty short time, but there was some thought that went into it. You did put yeah. a suit on. Yeah, I did put a suit on. I remember it. how to tie his tie. <laughs> I, I looked like a CEO. So, yeah. But it was CTO. Yeah. yeah. See, that was where you but I was in a tractor, so it worked out. I mean, <laughs> your mobile office. I mean, yeah. what what a position, though. It's it's no question. It's a, it's a very well paying job. I mean, I looked at it, you know. Um, probably what four times more than a regular college graduate, you know, position, but it's a one year deal, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm contracted to make content for them for this year. And then depending on how it goes, we can rehash. You think think just in your, your short, what month time that you've been here now that you could probably turn it into something, turn it into something like a, like a longer term position with deer. We're still figuring it out, man. Yeah. I mean, we. I've, sh- I've had about three shoots so far. Okay. Cool. Um, and we have a lot of content backed up from those shoots, but we're still waiting to post them on our calendar. Oh, uh, yeah. You know? Oh, my gosh. Hey, we're going to catch Is there that. ghosts in here? <laughs> on camera. Look at you that. You saw bag. that. Nobody touched it. Nobody yeah. touched oh it. Oh, my on camera. <laughs> That, hap- that happened at the NASCAR race, that, uh, but the wind, I think, had something to do with that. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> We're haunted. We no, leave any windows open in here? No breeze We're a here. haunted podcast. I think it's a little drafty from this door. <laughs> <laughs> so, Rex, did you have people help no. you film 
uh, your CTO video. No. So it's just kind of no. kind of <laughs> you and, and so, a tripod. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this exact setup right here is that the Sony ZV one. Uh, right it's here? the sixty-eight uh, A sixty-four hundred. Yeah. Think. Okay. Yeah, I grabbed something like that, and this was mind you, this is in the middle of my my finals. Oh shoot. Yeah, like pretty close <laughs> to it. So I'm studying a lot. I got a lot of assignments. I got to give up my capstone presentation to finish out my entire year, and I think I had about ten days to do it. So I'm like, okay, you know, I got to buckle down and just get this done. So I think on a school night, on a Wednesday, I wrote the song. Yeah. Like, so I, I produced it, wrote it, recorded it, mixed it, mastered it. And then the next day, I grabbed my skateboard, tripod, and a camera, and I just skated around campus to different locations and filmed me singing it. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So if it doesn't work out, you might have a gig with Farm for Profit. We, just have a bunch of <laughs> we need a video so editor. <laughs> all of our all of our sponsors get the custom jingle. A lot better the ads than yeah. what we do. But that's something you've been doing. You've been writing, and you're in a band, right? Yeah, yeah, I'm in a band. How'd that come about? So I made music all throughout high school. I was mostly making rap music, writing all the time, and then I kind of transitioned in college to making more indie and alternative music when I met. A bunch of more like-minded artists that were kind of going in the direction I wanted to go and that's how we started bringing instruments in uh, and then f met a bunch of friends that played music and we formed a band you know kind of the quintessential college band experience garage band type deal yeah. <laughs> I mean sorry to interrupt but speaking of jingle who recorded the jingle at the beginning of your podcast <laughs> oh the she the sea shanty Yes. Yes, that's Tyler uh, Richton. Tyler, Tyler Richton, Richton High, High Bank Boys. Yep. I actually wrote, wrote that it, song. You wrote so that's it. how I could. I I got in my profile on Twitter. I'm a songwriter. <laughs> yeah. Yep. I wrote one I, song. I called you out on that the other yeah, day. Yeah. You're like, what is like, this? It, why the hell do you have songwriter? So, so <laughs> it actually has two verses. We shortened it down. The full intro song mm. is like three minutes yeah. and ten seconds long. And we're like, well, you wrote a three minute song. Yeah. He's a songwriter. I don't know. I mean, that was, it came out like we kind of started not blowing up, but we grew fast during that TikTok phase, like in mm -hmm. 2020, 2021. And that sea shanty was like, you the know, thing. big, oh, man. Oh, Every oh, people oh, started oh. making, I was like, I could do this, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, we need something like that at the beginning. And now we kind of rotate it between that. And then sometimes someone introduces us. It's yeah. yeah. We try to keep Can't it have fresh. your kids do we, it though. We don't want, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. We learned it. <laughs> don't put kids in it because it annoys some of our listeners. Yeah. <laughs> like nails I, on a chalkboard. I'm like really? Tanner had his daughters. Yeah. Just, yeah. Just do one of our ad reads, and they said like eight words. That was it. Yep. Oh well. I had to ask because I thought that was awesome. Yeah. yeah. I was looking through some of your videos in preparation. You know yeah. what are these boys like. Yeah. Uh -huh. And hey, that you, was the first thing. I heard. It's open, like, man. You go. can write us a sea shanty <laughs> or or whatever. <laughs> yes. And then uh, on our on the beginning of our YouTube is uh, Randy the farmer. That's right. Yeah. Um, and he's kind of just a funny funny dude. Like he uh, makes a lot of different jingles for a lot of companies and. He falls down all I, the time. I got yeah. a bone to pick with him because yeah. uh, he gifted us that intro song and then publicly <laughs> comes out last week, yeah. two weeks ago, and demands a $10,000. Yeah. yeah. You're kidding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> nope. Comes right out there. It's all After fun the game. fact. It's After all fun the fact. Yeah. It's funny. It's, it was. It, uh, it's a good joke. What are you going to do? The, <laughs> the number of people that hit us up in our DMs or on the comments. Pay like, Randy. Pay the man. Pay, pay Randy. Randy. Why would you stiff him? I'm like, <laughs> the man's been paid. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, you need, to, you need to meet Randy the farmer sometime. He's from okay. Florida, farms so, cotton and soybeans. We've got peanuts? to meet. Or, and peanuts, that's what it is. We've got to meet all kinds of people in that content creation world. Mm -hmm. Were you kind of already in the content creation world and have your own folks that you're already with? Or are you meeting new ones now? Yeah, I'm meeting a lot of new ones now in completely different areas yeah. of the TikTok sphere. I had a fairly big following, nothing crazy, but I was definitely in that influencer world. I had some connections with other influencers, but I wasn't the type of guy to, you know, go meet up with you and make content. Yeah. You know, hey, hop on podcasts. I kind of just did my own thing, made my art, made my music, and I really did influencing on my own time. Just <laughs> for what fun. What grew your channel? Because I remember when I first looked, and maybe it was after the CTO announced, you were at like 120 some thousand on, mm -hmm. on TikTok, which is, that's Sounds pretty great. good. Yeah. You know, hmm. was it the sculptures that did that or something else? Yeah, it was, uh, live streaming is what did it tiktok really? live yeah so really? i st i started making these sculptures out of baby bell cheese wax 
and how much? Tea which is a wild, eat? like just crazy you thing. Eat? To do anyway. He just had a TikTok about this, <laughs> I, right? But this is for our <laughs> listeners that haven't seen it. How much? Yeah. Like, that's a lot of cheese. It's a good amount of cheese, man. Yeah, <laughs> cheese I mean, is good though. This how is, you stay regular? Oh, this is <laughs> peak COVID. 2020. Yeah. Uh, I graduated in the COVID year, high school, and I went to the University of Washington for school. The school was closed. So you had a couple thousand kids just in the dorm for no reason. <laughs> like, we were just there to be there. Yeah. Oh, you, and they didn't even do class or nothing. No, nah, it was online school, but yeah. I mean, it's online school. Yeah. yeah. So nothing was really prompting us to get out of the house that much. So I was sitting in my dorm room, going down, getting some snacks from the market, picking up some baby bell cheese, and I'm always doing something with the hands. I like, I got a stick right now. I just like fiddling with something. And I'm so impressed. Like it, you I'd could probably wield some nunchucks. <laughs> just <laughs> wield some nunchucks. You give me a week. <laughs> yeah, so that's I what we need. We need John Deere it. nunchucks, okay? Or fidget spinners. You hear that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was just fiddling with the wax, and then I made it into a little animal. And posted it on like, my private story. People swiped up. Ah, oh, this is funny. And I thought the better I made it, the funnier it would be. Because it's out of baby bell cheese wax. So if you make something realistic, it's like, come on, man, what? Are you sponsored by them too? Uh, no, I'm not sponsored by them. That's that's a whole other story. <laughs> we'll get we there. Got, we got all kinds. Of, I'll make but, a note. I will get. I'll make. Uh, I just sound like some pajama something onesie. Yes. Yeah. Type. yeah. So they sent me some stuff. Okay. Yeah, cool. But there's no money involved. All right. Yeah. Got it. Um. So. I didn't want to spend all the time making content and filming me sculpting this because I just didn't have a lot of time being in school and making music and, you know, living my life. So instead, I just set up the camera and clicked live. And then you can just watch me yeah. as I did it. And it was the easiest way to make content. And I did this at like midnight, late at night, and I'd have some nice, soothing music in the background. And this is what I did every night. Yeah. Um, and people we're really into it. I like this is calming. I like watching somebody just create being really focused. So do you have to like and have your yeah. hands manicured and you know, whatever's <laughs> right on camera? I'm thinking Corey over here just got a pedicure for the first I time. Did. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I Are you kidding did. Me? I absolutely did. Lost so, my man card, but it was amazing. So if you <laughs> if you're on camera and everybody's just watching your hands, I think I'd be a little self conscious about well, mine are messed up to begin with, but uh, you're on camera right now. You got the whole we're the airing it all taped. out, man. Yeah. yeah. I got my fingernail growing back from losing it during planting this spring. It looks like yeah. crap. It's pretty <laughs> hardcore, though. <laughs> it, it, it Dave's over here with his soft hands. <laughs> Dave's had a it's, pedicure. No, scar, 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 <laughs> scar, just, scar, just scar, scar, scar. I got a one one uh, little boo-boo on my hand little right boo-boo. now. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you do? Fall off a I tried gator? to golf. Tried to golf. Tried to, I golf. Tried to golf. <laughs> oh, you're not a golfer, huh? Oh, did no. you get to play in the pro am? No, no. <laughs> I was just, I was was just practicing a little bit. Was it miniature golf? <laughs> <sighs> yeah, I was practicing a little bit. I was like, oh, I suck at this. And I'm like, oh, I really suck at this, actually. So, yeah, considering where that's at on your hand, you probably weren't holding the club correctly, because that. <laughs> no, you don't want to see me behind the tee, brother. <laughs> <laughs> you don't. What do they call those uh, live videos, or not even live, where it's just like the AS, sound? AS, ASMR. ASMR. Yeah, is that kind of like what you were doing? Or? No. no. No? I can't stand that stuff. <laughs> hey, you know, there's something for everybody. Sure. Yeah. But no, I'm not. But I'm just that. thinking, if you're doing this at like midnight on the West Coast, it's, you know, middle of the night. Like, oh, yeah. And these people are just like, I don't know, they're like using maybe some extracurriculars and like, zonked out and like you know like this I, is freaking I, yeah. awesome man yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. so just a way to calm down when i looked yeah. at your feed when i met you uh, the other day i was like oh okay so i saw wax wax mm-hmm. wax wax i'm like what else who else mm-hmm. is this guy mm-hmm. who else are you well that it, my tiktok is such a one-sided view yeah. of who i am and tiktok you have to be niche yeah. you know to be yep. successful and sculpting is a very small part of what I'm passionate about and what I do, but it's what succeeded on TikTok. And so that's just what I posted. Oh, okay. And, you know, I'd live my life and have a good time outside of that. Yep. But, you know, now you come to my TikTok and it looks like this is just you, you know. But but, but you're yeah. right because mm-hmm. we even notice as a podcast on the oh, podcast man. channel, if we do something outside of our lane, that's Corey's, to quote Corey, if we're outside of our lane, it doesn't perform. But if we come back in and we tell a story about agriculture or we bring a, a, an item of value to, to help yep. farmers make more mm-hmm. money and whew. so we know you don't yeah. golf. 
He skateboards, it sounds like. Skateboard. Yeah. He eats a ton like of cheese. Longboard or like longboard? He eats a ton like, of cheese. Nah, like uh, real skateboard. Yeah. A like kickflip street. Yeah. 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 You could do some tricks. He's going to yeah. need a deer I can skateboard. Do some tricks. I'm making the list. If you John, your skateboard. You a skateboard he can, can ollie, but he tricks. can't golf. Funny. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I actually had a skateboard once. Yeah. Yeah. I used to wear the vans. So you like do anything else? Yeah. Married kids? I'm a big hobby guy, man. Yeah. I love just doing. Doing new hobbies. Have you ever disc golf? golf? Really? No. I play a lot of basketball. Okay. A ton of basketball. Uh, Are in you college. left-handed or right-handed? Right-handed. Okay. Yeah. I don't and know why. You just seemed like a left-handed person. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what does that if mean? I should be insulted <laughs> What does that I mean? <laughs> I, I've got a lot of envy for left-handed people, especially in basketball. What are they, better? You would go. They do seem better at sports. It, it just seems more natural. A golf swing, a basketball shot. The, what frustrated me with the left-handed basketball players, you'd go up to block like they're going to shoot right-handed, yeah. and the ball's not oh, there. They're yeah, those boys are strapped. If you can <laughs> shoot with the left, you got yeah. the cleanest form yep. in the game. And then in yeah. baseball, you're closer to the base. Yeah. <laughs> One step closer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, yeah. You, and you get to see the curveballs coming in at you. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so I played basketball. Um, for, I was on the women's team in college, so the University of Washington women's b-ball team. So I was their practice player. Uh, so ah. I was like their scout team point guard. You were on the women's yeah. volleyball team? <laughs> no, I was on the women's scout team for basketball. Volleyball team. And then <laughs> we'll just say yes. the men's volleyball <laughs> team recruited me off of the women's scout team. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. They recruit for that? Well, it was a college of eight girls to one guy. Recruiting meant, oh, here's somebody that's in the gym. <laughs> here's a warm body. <laughs> here's a warm body. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I'm not built like the college volleyball player should be You're built. You're a golfer, a basketball player, a volleyball player. Yeah. What other sports do you do? I'm a podcaster. Podcast. Uh, no, okay. I, I I just enjoy being competitive. He coaches. Yeah. You coach your kids. Yeah, I do less playing now and more coaching. So yes. when you grow up in Iowa, there's like not a lot to do extracurricular, you know, out like so like, like besides everything we had to do on the farm. Right on the farm, yeah. There's a lot to do there, but like sports, playing sports as a kid was a pretty big deal. And every mm -hmm. town's a small town, so they don't have a lot to pick from. So every kid plays every sport. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, like I graduated with 31. So our high school had like 128 kids yeah. in it total. So for me to make the baseball team, it was show up. Show up. You need to yeah. Yeah, get here. How many wow. were in your senior class? About 300, yeah, I, guess. I think. Which from where I'm from is pretty average. Uh, mm -hmm. And it gets a lot bigger as well. Mm -hmm. but, yeah. How far were you from the ocean? Like 45 minutes to an hour. So, so we were really inland. Uh, I didn't spend a lot of time going to the the beach in San Francisco, but my grandparents are from Santa Cruz, like the Aptos area, mm -hmm. which is, uh, I'm sure you guys know, like the Salinas Valley. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like really close to there. So we drive down all the time growing up and go to the beach. So that, there. uh, so probably not a surfer. Not really, but I can surf. Okay. Yeah. I can. Yeah. I've That's never cool. tried. I'd like to try that sometime. All right. Well, there's a couple things I want to get to. Um, he made us put baby bill on the back burner and I want to <laughs> get to your, your meeting with Jackson too. But mm. first we, we love our listeners. And uh, we love our fans. I know John Deere loves the fans of their brand as well. Uh, and we love to get listener reviews. So we've got a five-star review here from Hooper Parents, which is fitting. We just talked about basketball there. They left us a five-star review labeled Taverns. Oh, boy. We're talking yeah. about taverns again? So, Rex, do you know what a tavern is? Here we go. A tavern where you go and get a couple of brews. Thank you. Oh, yes. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. So, ding, ding, ding. So a tavern to me is a loose meat sandwich with sauce. So it's a ground it's beef a dumb with Iowa sauce. Thing. Okay. No, that's not it's even a dumb Iowa thing. It's a dumb Northwest Norwegian Iowa thing. thing. <laughs> Northwest no, Iowa I'm Iowa Norwegian. <laughs> and, uh, no, it's, it's a Northwest <laughs> Iowa thing. So they call them Sloppy Joes or Maid Rights or whatever you guys yeah, call sloppy them. Sloppy Joes. Yeah. yeah. I grew up in northeast Nebraska, and we called them taverns. I live 45 minutes from Omaha, and they were ver referred to as Sloppy Joes there. My wife is from south central Nebraska and refers to them as Sloppy Joes as well. You're not alone. So, of course, I had to save that listener review because I'm not wrong. I just apparently am aligned with people from Nebraska. <laughs> What's the question here? Yeah. Yeah, I he didn't get one. Tanner just likes just to read reviews. reviews. There's That's no just question. Review. Oh, okay. We well, just I tell people all the time, if you leave us five stars, you can write whatever you want yeah. to. So and we need interaction from her. I love it. This is yeah. legitimately yeah. just somebody taking my back for once, my side, saying that they are called taverns. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I grew up playing pool in a place called Damn Town Tavern. Oh. Yeah. Did That's they like serve, the name of the bar. Did they serve loose sweet. meat sandwiches? They did not. Dave's actually from Montana. Yeah. Oh, all right. We're yeah. out in Montana. Have her. Like, here's a horse. You can have her. 
Like that's that's the name of the town. Nobody and ever kinda... gives horses away like that. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. Back in the old um, west, you know. I don't think I've ever been to Montana, but <laughs> I'd li- I don't think I have either. I'd like to go sometime. It's a fun place. Dave's mm-hmm. supposed to take me out. Yeah, we're gonna go elk, elk hunting. Elk hunting. My girlfriend's mom is from Terry. Montana. Whoa, whoa, hold on! You got a girlfriend? Yes. Ooh, we learned something about the CTO. Yes. There we go. Is yeah. she graduated? Was this, was this before yes, or after graduated. the CTO job? <laughs> yeah, have you, have you had like new DMs or like what's the? <laughs> no, not really, uh, not really. It's uh, it's still taking off. Okay. Yeah, but what do you know about Terry, Montana? Anything? I I think it's a small place. Nothing. Not Same a lot. like thirty-one graduating class. Yeah. yeah, I mean that blows my mind. Thirty I people. So you know every single person. Yes. Well. Very in well. your high school. Oh, I, I knew who their grandma and grandpa were, and I could probably walk up to their house, and they would know who I was. I mean, just, yeah, you would know their parents. I mean, I, you couldn't get away with much because mm-hmm. everybody also knew who you were. So yeah. if, if you were the kid doing donuts in the intersection, your parents cut. probably Tanner thought. was out there doing donuts again. All right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want, I want to talk about getting the CTO and, and mm-hmm. coming into that because I reached out to you. I know Dave did mm-hmm. as well. Like, there was a lot of hate. It felt like in the ag community. Did you did you Are you feel saying that? was like past tense or still is? Was at first. I guess I haven't seen it lately. Maybe think, there still is. I think there's an undertone yet. D- did you feel that? Terraplex Ag is your one-stop shop for agricultural drones. Visit www.terraplexag.com to explore their range of drones, support equipment, and technology that provides you the accuracy and efficiency you need. Their experts have training and support services to help you use your equipment safely and effectively. Or you could have them custom apply your chemicals themselves. Unlock the agility that you need to accelerate profitability on your farm with Terraplex Ag. Delivering cutting-edge solutions for yield-maximizing results. Visit www.terraplexag.com. Yeah, I mean, uh, there's definitely some yeah. backlash yeah. Um, coming coming out of it. I pay attention to it a little bit. I mean, yeah. as much as I need to, just to yeah. kind of see where opinions right. lie. Yeah. Why, why do you think that was? Well, I think... First and foremost, the title chief tractor officer was maybe a little bit misleading Mm -hmm. to people because my job is not to know about equipment, which I think a lot of people assumed that it was. I mean, it was weighted in the fine print. Tractor knowledge was, or maybe it was history of John Deere. It was brand knowledge. Brand knowledge, which was what, 15%? Which you did your research. So then you probably beat everyone else out that just like (laughs) randomly applied. When I thought brand knowledge, I, I thought less about equipment and more of the goal they're trying to reach right. with, yep. with this. Um, so, yeah, my, my job was not to know about the equipment. It's to meet with people like you yep. to help them tell their story in the most creative way possible that is palatable for right. Gen Z. Yep. Yeah, and so I you can't blame them. No. At all. I, I see where they're coming from. Uh, a little bit unfortunate, but... I think the more content we make, uh, we can help shift opinions. Yeah. I've got I've got two things on it. I I feel terrible for how Ag did that. Um, I understand why, but we're trying to always be inviting in Ag. We're like, we need to tell our story. We need to tell our story, and then mm-hmm. we actually find someone to tell our story and connect with the consumer and the next generation. And then we're just like gatekeeping Ag. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like. So a get off get off that 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 pisses me off. And then I do think John Deere did a nice bait and switch, in you know, and what a marketing you know deal, right? Like Chief Tractor Officer Brock Purdy. I mean, they had a bunch of buzz. It was mm-hmm. fantastic. Yep. And I think some of the ag people, from what they told me, just felt like they had their backs turned on them. But it's like I think if they just would have called you like Director of Gen Z engagement we've mm-hmm. got a very good friend uh, vance sure. crow who was uh director at, of millennial at, director of millennial engagement at bayer um and he's not there anymore but like yeah all brands need to do that right mm-hmm. so it's just a little bit of a bait and switch but yeah after you read into it, it's like i think you're the perfect person for the job i appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad i'm not you got a lot of pressure well, that's not what you said hands. on the drive over here like, <laughs> <laughs> oh we're still so we're still gonna like line up and take some pictures, like we're, gonna, we're like we're getting ready to fight. Yeah, like, oh, yeah. something like we, yeah. we need some content. Corey, I, I, Corey so fights the CTO. Lean into it a little yeah. bit, you know. I mean, it's fun. Yeah. Uh, we we had a ton of fun with, and I say we. I had a very small part of Corey's CTO campaign, but as a group, we had a ton of fun playing off of it and 
the the content opportunities that it created and the fake promises and <laughs> and everything that might they, they they could turn real. They're f- I mean, I'm I'm game for chief collaboration officer. Yeah. Chief puck officer. You could start or, with upgrading Baby Bell oh. cheese being a collaboration. There we go. With John Deere. Maybe they could make green wrappers instead of red ones. They do. What? Vegan cheese. Oh, really? Yes. Well, that's <laughs> vegan that's cheese. off brand for ag, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Mm-hmm. Huh. What is ve- vegan cheese made of? I, soy beans. Plants. Yeah. Well, I guess that's still ag. Almonds? Do you eat that cheese too? <laughs> no. 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 I was no. going to say, is it any good? Yeah, it's, uh, that's the right answer nope. for this podcast. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't even think I've ever tried it. Somebody sent me some in my P.O. box, but unrefrigerated. So I'm like, I'm not going to eat this food. <laughs> oh, man. man. I'm sorry. So you, uh, had, you had a little bit of uh, hate, but from the egg community, there's a couple people that are uh, out there, I saw some oh, yeah. some people that are content creators like, hey, I'm not even going to weigh in on this uh, uh, at all. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, more, they just wanted uh, uh, clickbait. The classic you know, no get, comment. Yeah, yeah to mm-hmm. get clicked on uh, nonetheless. I, I'm guessing you probably had some people reach out to you as well on a positive side. Oh, yeah. I mean, yep. you yep. first and foremost. Yep. Thank you again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Reached out to me immediately. Offered to bring me out here onto the podcast. Yep. And, uh had some really kind words, and that was super motivating to me, yep. knowing that at least we have some people on our side. Huge shout out to Ag with Emma. She made a video kind of explaining um, her take on the situation. It was very positive and very supportive of me. Mm-hmm. And I think hearing from somebody in that community has a better chance of shifting those opinions uh, more quickly. Yep. Yeah, it took me a day or two to get over my loss. <laughs> <laughs> my, I had to tell him that my press conference was recorded oh, it two was. weeks yeah, before I even know who was the yeah. CTO. So I was like, I hope you don't take anything directed at you. I just thought it was funny. <laughs> Nothing Farm for Profit does is fast. So <laughs> everything everything is pre-recorded, and then it gets fully edited. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this, this is fun doing uh-huh. that. Mm-hmm. So. Huh. So they so now you get to go. Uh, anything you're super looking forward to? Like, I, have they given you any insight? We don't know what you all get to do, but do you have some cool stuff that you can tell? <sighs> Let's see. So yeah, we're kind of always about three, looking three weeks ahead um, for the next place that we're going to go and shoot some content. So most most recently on the eighth, we're going to fly out to California and go see Driscoll's Berries, uh, a farm that supplies them. Mm-hmm. And you know, if you get berries. You're probably going to see their name. Uh, and then we're going to the biggest carrot farm in the world. Wow. Wow. So I've been told. But Does John Deere make a carrot excited. harvester? I don't know that answer. Carrot harvesting is like one of the most like coolest things. Like you watch on the internet and they're just being plucked out of the ground. And Well, I was, I was messaging with Greg and was going to see if he was going to be out there. And it didn't sound like he was able to make the trip. But he's the director of high value crops. It's, it's oh. cool to see deer putting more resources behind these specialty crops and, and making sure that the farmer has the tool yep. that they need. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And all the I states, it's always corn and beans, corn and beans, and that's it. But mm-hmm. there's a whole lot, as we've interviewed people from everywhere, man, there's a lot of crops out there. Well, it's all oh, John yeah. Deere green here in the Midwest. And you go out to the world ag expo and in John Deere's booth, there's other brands that John Deere owns. Like it's yeah. kind of cool. Yeah. Specialty sprayers, the gust sprayer, autonomous yeah. sprayers. Mm-hmm. Like it's very cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's such a temperate climate out there that yeah. so they can grow. So what much. do you think? What do you think John Deere needs to do to? They didn't hire Corey because he's not very good, but <laughs> with Gen I, Z anyway. But no, how how are you going to connect with Gen Z? How, how do we tell the stories with them? Is it just using social media? It's a great question. Uh, right now, it is using social media, TikTok, which is the most popular platform for them, at least yep. in short form. Uh, and I think the best way to reach them an entire audience that knows little to nothing about ag and construction is to show them a product that they're familiar with, show them a product that they like, that they use every day and then trace it back to how it was made. And nine times out of 10, it's going to be with the John Deere in some form of its life cycle. So like from the clothes that you wear, the food that you eat, the roads that you walk on, a lot of people don't know that that can be traced back to John Deere. And so, that's the kind of content that we're going to make to help engage them. Who made the video? Somebody made a video that was maybe negative towards Rex. Uh, I don't Tractor know if it, guy. No, well, him too. But no, it wasn't. It was. It was more on. Uh, we're not feeding the world. We're still in it for uh, a paycheck. It's Cody. still a business. Cody Garrett. Yeah, Cody. Which I I sympathized with that message. Not not anything negative 
towards you, Rex, but the message that is it really feeding the world or, I mean, I get to sell agriculture land and there's a lot of money. There's a lot of dollars that move. It's still a business. And uh, I mean, you're running a family business. You're helping with a family business. And, and I'm just trying to play for fun, you know, in that business, but using my other business to assist it. Uh, I, I I agreed with if that. If anybody followed what you just said, they deserve an award. I know because it's good. basically. <laughs> let me let me sum this up. He's saying, you know, there's some farmers that are like, thank me, thank me. You know, I'm feeding the world. I'm feeding sure. the 50 billion by 2050 or whatever it is. And then, you know, it is a business. Farm for profit. Other, if you're not farming for profit, you won't be farming for long, right? That that's, it's a business. It, we yep. are trying to farm to make money to feed our families. At the end of the day, out in California, we. Um, interviewed, can't remember his name now, but he said sustainability to him was having a farm next Josh. year. Yeah, yep. right. Like because if he doesn't have a farm next year and spends all he this money doing all this yep. other stuff, he doesn't have a job. Mm-hmm. Right. So everyone has their own definition. Um, I think the my opinion is if you eat food three times a day, you're thanking a farmer plenty. <clears throat> right. But there's a lot of people that want that notoriety from feeding the world. You can think of it however you want. However you get the job done, just get it done. Okay. Yeah, I don't know if we spread them. So I just got more in – I've been in agriculture but into farming myself this year. And I don't know that I think of it as feeding the world by any means that I've heard other I mean, it is. people out there. I still think of it as a – well, we got to hang out with Iowa Corn, and you don't realize how many products corn goes yes, into correct. until Iowa Corn tells you it's more than four. Even fireworks. Yeah. 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 But one of the first stops is your CTO gig was to go hang out with Jackson. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Tell us about that meeting. <clears throat> he is the most passionate and intelligent and funny young kid I think <clears throat> I have ever met in my life. I had a blast hanging out with him the entire day, uh, really just getting to know him and his family as well hung out for a couple hours and then we went and got lunch and came back and the day wasn't really about making content <clears throat> it was just about asking him questions and getting him to talk about what he's most passionate about and then having somebody just in the back capturing those moments pretty easy to figure out what he's passionate about <laughs> oh yeah he's never gold. i mean he's got to be someone's grandpa reincarnated like uh, it's yeah. nuts yeah. i was not passionate about anything at that age <laughs> let alone that mm-hmm. I mean, he's hyper focused. Mm-hmm. I got to go go help move my parents from the old farmhouse into their new one this last weekend, and I brought back some of my Michael Jordan carts. I think that's probably the only thing I was that passionate about at that age was pogs. Was pogs? <laughs> oh, jeez, <laughs> dated yourself. Half our listeners don't know what pogs. Yeah, what's that? <laughs> Look it up sometime. I mean, it's these. I don't even know what it was. I don't even know what how are you, you tell him to look up. You go to no. <laughs> P-O-G. <laughs> but uh, what, you go to like Hardee's and you fill up the spaceship up, and all yeah. that. like Yeah, and then you'd have the a dumb, slammers. A dumb collectible deal that, yeah. Well, I like tell you what, they used to just, before the internet was like readily available in every house, they just fed off of people to collect the dumbest stuff. <laughs> Junk. What were you saying the other day that some generations had no internet and yep. then some grew up without internet and then professionally were introduced to the internet? And of course, generations now we're born with internet. So it's just a, a crossover and an evolution. Yeah. They'll never know. I mean, you think so half of the, half of the farmers that are out there are still, what's the age demographic still older than 60, 58. So, I think is average. you know, uh, the, the brand, the company that you're representing of the people that buy the equipment, of course, are, um, not social. They're social at the local coffee shop every morning, but they are not social. It's changing quickly. Though. It is. It is because you get into even my demographic at 40. And, and yeah, there, there's a bridge where we learned it all, Tanner. And then all my kids, they'll never know life without, you know, ever. Yeah, I mean, your kids are like, I want to grow up and be a YouTube influencer. They do. Or it's like, right? Yep. Like, that you was can. never a thing. When we were born, that was not a thing. You can grow up and be a TikTok influencer. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. they don't ban TikTok. Mm-hmm. Oh, so what's the what's the plan Ooh, there if something happens to TikTok? You'd have to ask my boss. <laughs> <laughs> Instagram. They got a side channel. Speaking of side channels. Well, Jen, I think Jen answered that in <clears throat> she our did. interview. She yeah. said, well, they're, they're, the eyeballs are going to go somewhere. Gonna it's go probably going to go mm-hmm. Instagram or something, you know, like that. So did you have – I saw you made a video that said, this is my own channel. Go to John Deere for John Deere stuff. Was there a bunch of yeah. people, like, wondering where the content was or something? Yeah, but, yeah people were – Assuming that all right, as a CTO, CTO, where the heck are you? Yeah, yeah, like, let's go. Yeah, yeah, I'm like, hey, I'm John Deere's influencer. Everything you see on my account is just what I like to do personally. 
just my personal life. And there might be a little bit of overlap. Now I go on these trips, maybe I'll make some content about it. But I think you need to throw them for a loop and have like a, another personality <laughs> and like, oh, we're not doing cheese today. <laughs> we're over here doing. <laughs> so I, yeah, I just posted a video of me metal detecting the other day. Yeah. Just out in the Is field. that a hobby of yours? Yeah, I love it, man. Have you ever found mm-hmm. anything good? Yeah. What's yeah. the wand? Like, the like little, little wand like this. People lose so like, like yeah. those diamond yeah. rings, man. Oh, yeah. I found a big gold ring before. A couple silver pendants. A lot of different types of rings. Yeah, but that where wand. At? Where do you? Sorry, go ahead. Oh well, so the wand, that orange thing that people have around. So when you metal detect with the stick, you find something, you dig it up, and then that thing is a mini metal detector. Huh. So like if this is a piece, if this is a piece of metal. You get closer, it goes, and then you can pinpoint it. Exactly yeah, so you're not is. digging up a huge circle. Exactly. You just yeah. You've never watched the TikTok lives of people metal detecting. No, I, I have. I've seen those. Oh gosh, sweet! Man. I could get. I don't spend. I'm like, see, I gotta stop. Stop watching. I, I feel like I need in. to start going live because I don't even watch a lot of TikTok lives. So let alone do I go? Nothing live. about your life would I be that interesting. I get screwed into them. <laughs> I click on something to swipe, and somehow I'm in the live feed, and then you just uh, all your swiping mm-hmm. is other lives. I like know. I don't somebody, know how I got in here. Somebody sent me that coffee mug again that said "freak into sheets," and it's an Excel spreadsheet. Excel spreadsheet. So maybe people would love to watch me play in Excel. <laughs> they would. I bet they're the whole world. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. He, he will, like, if he was designing a house, he would build it in Microsoft Excel. We, did. Like, we did the floor plan for the studio in Excel. <laughs> wow. Here's a like, summit, what are you doing? summit formula with quotations, parentheses, yeah. comma. Makes <laughs> yeah. a couch. <laughs> <laughs> no. I um, want to see Kyle make a graphic about that. Yeah. <laughs> he probably so can. If you could tell, maybe we can edit this. Can you, if you could tell other people that are giving you crap, Publicly, what would you say to him? That's that's. I mean, no holds barred. <laughs> no no holds barred. What would you say to him? <laughs> Again, uh, like I said before, I don't hold any ill will yeah. towards these people. It's the internet, and people are just gonna say what they think yeah. without really thinking it through that much. And so, all you can hope for is that you make genuine, authentic content that fulfills the promises that. I made and the company made and hopefully they're on board, but you're never going to shift everybody's opinion. Some people are so cemented in what they believe. And hey, you should vote for. It's all right, man. <laughs> <laughs> well, we know from social media that usually stuff that has a little bit of controversy and people arguing in the comments. It's actually pretty good. Do a lot better. And I mm-hmm. think your, your mm-hmm. deal with your first video with Jackson had like 21 million views or 29 something. Now. 29 now. Yeah. Holy ah, crap. Man. Like I would mm-hmm. say that had an impact. Yeah, because then, there's not even 29 yeah. million farmers. <clears throat> nope. So no. that's kind of the goal of shifting or getting more people involved that aren't part of the community. That's yep. our one goal. And then if you look at those the demographic insights of how that post is doing, most of it is that target audience that we were trying to hit. So well, we, that's a good start. So we didn't make the... If you, uh, if you had a 30-day review, I say you yeah, probably had yeah, a pretty good 30-day I mean, review. Yeah. We didn't make the second go or the you know the finals round for CTO. Was there a bunch of other people? Did you guys all get flown somewhere and meet and they interviewed you? Or was it just like, you're the guy? No, nah, I just, just got an email that said, hey, you're a finalist and we're going to interview you either tomorrow or after the weekend. And that was it. Do we know who was, was in quick. the top 10? Um, I know our friend Rachel with Iowa Corn was in top five or ten. Um, I don't know anyone else. Gotcha. Sure. I mean, I don't even know who the top ten was. I only, only reason I know was because we were talking to her about some other stuff. She's like, hey, I got an interview. So I don't know either. Yeah, you don't even know. Mm-mm. There had could, to be some other questions. What kind of questions did they ask you in the interview? That was a pretty standard behavioral interview. Yeah? Yeah. You're and not, then it's not going to be a wild card that we have to contain, no, you know. No, she wanted was, someone yeah, made, made her nervous. She said yeah. uh, when she talked to us, she would. Yeah, we get to interview Jen to Hartman. Un- uncomfortable. Sweet. I, Jen put out a tweet on what day of the week were you announced? Like a Tuesday Wednesday. or something? Wednesday. Wednesday. I remember yeah. the, like the week before you got announced, she put out a tweet about anxiety. And I, I commented on there. I'm like. You're about ready to announce the CTO, aren't you? And she's like, you know me too well. <laughs> you know me too well. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we love Jen. She's well, been great. Her, her, one of my favorite comments I said every time I talk about her is don't worry about what you post, just engage. Mm-hmm. So engage with everyone out there. Mm-hmm. I'm a, you, you got a tough job ahead of you, a fun job, but 
it's it's no question that there's some negative sentiment, not about you, but just in John Deere in general, between some layoffs and some stuff moving to Mexico and things of that nature. I mean, like, what do you think? How are you going to, you know, portray that going forward? Again, I'm just going to do do my job yep. on social media. I'm trying to reach young kids on TikTok and tell the story of how John Deere shows up in our right. everyday lives. The other the other side of it, the politics is something the people above me right. handle. You know, I mean, there's yep. not isn't too that, much. That, isn't that nice that that's yeah. not your problem? Ah, well, I mean, you're going to get to yeah. answer a lot of questions like what they just asked, but you don't have to have the solution. No, and I, I don't think they are expecting or wanting me to, yeah. to play that role. I mean, we, we're here to make content, and we're here to engage Gen Z, uh, and then there's another department. Yeah, you know. I was, I mean, I, that was on my mind if I were to be picked, even though I couldn't be, you know, because it was always in the back of my mind, like, what if they did? And it, <laughs> and it was like, I don't know how I would answer that. And I've thought about it a lot now, and it's like, John Deere's been around for how many years? That's why they didn't want anybody to know. 175, a whatever. I mean, how, a long, long time, right? They have won a mm -hmm. long time. They're going to continue to win. And they're only playing by the rules that they're given, right? Like, if it's demand going lower, you can't just have people working when demand was high. Like, it's it's unfortunately that kind of a business. Like, mm -hmm. So they're going to continue to win and do what they need to do for their business, as you should do for your farm, right? That's right. And that's... I don't think something that you could tell to a 15 year old kid. Right. Scrolling on his phone. Yeah. And they don't probably care. I think the people that care are like the diehard John Deere fans, mm -hmm. or they live in a town where, you know, their buddy got laid off or they got laid off. Right. Yeah. Like, and mm -hmm. nobody ever wants to feel like they're wrong. So if the, the other brand neighbor comes up to him and says, what's the deal with your tractor brand doing this? It doesn't matter what color, what direction it is. Just nobody wants to be wrong. Mm -hmm. That's why they listen to farm for profit. So they can always be right. Be right. I mean, that's <laughs> we're always right. Unless it's an off week and we're doing a fun show, then they can just. Oh, have we're fun. still right. Is that a fountain pen? It is. It's it is sweet, a fountain man. pen. Yeah. Like, it's a John Deere fountain pen. You're kidding. Uh -huh. <laughs> wow. What strings did you have to pull to get this? eBay. eBay. <laughs> 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 uh, and a lot of money. That's a, that's an yeah. expensive one. I yeah. so I am actually buying a farm. So you got to twist it off. I'm actually buying a farm, and I wanted a nice pen to uh, sign some documents with. So. Just uh, sign your name there, and I'm going uh, to frame it. There you go. <laughs> All right, man. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, let's get the last name. <laughs> so did you have to quit your band? Like, are you? Uh, Wait, did we ever get what the band name was? It's just uh, my name, Rextro, R-E-X-T-R-O. Is that your full name? No, my, f my full name is Rexford. Rexford. R -E -X Rexford. 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 Okay. Yeah. Rexford. Is that a family name? I don't know if I've ever heard of Rexford. <laughs> nah, they just they wanted to name me Rex, but they wanted to ha me to have a, a professional name in case you got the CTO name. job. And so I could just yeah, go by huh. Rexford in, in business. Love if I ever got there. What's your favorite band? Oh, good question, man. Um, I wanted to hear because if going from rapping to indie, brand. like I mean, yeah, I don't listen to a ton of rap these days. You've uh, got to make I'm a deal really sometime. Yeah, I should. Uh, and I've, I'm really into the underground scene. Yeah. Like I'm going out to concerts that are like ten bucks all the time right. on the weekends, and just seeing these guys go crazy on stage. Right. I love that. Um, Kowser likes that too. Really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, are like because like Zach Bryan was kind of a, like a country indie, I would say. I mean, do you like yeah. Zach Bryan? You like that kind of stuff? I think he like, makes good music. I, yeah. I think he's actually out of the most famous country singers, probably one of my favorite. Yeah. But I've have not listened to more than like ten of his songs, maybe. Really? I don't listen to a lot of country. Yeah. Not yet, at least. Not yet. Not yet. Least. Yeah. Yeah. I'm getting into it a little bit more. If there's crossover on TikTok. Everybody's putting a country song to rap now. I see that guy. I got on his feed oh, once. Mix. Right. Oh, oh, yeah. They're mixing rap with everything. It's you know? crazy. Yep. You see, uh, what did I look? Morgan Wallen. Yep. He he starts rapping in some of his songs now. He gets well, he's got Post with Malone with him. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> actually crazy. Sometimes I go on the, the top 50 hits, which I don't do that much. Yeah. I, I check in every so often to see, like, what are they doing these days? And I'm hearing a country guitar with the most trap drums behind it. I'm like, yep. how did we get here? Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love the evolution of music. Yep. 
But yeah. it does blow my it does blow my mind. Yep. Well, the, the questions don't get any easier towards the end of the interview. So <laughs> if you he never you, answered favorite favorite band. I know. He's I skirting. Know, I like, already like a politician. Yeah, I'm you are already <laughs> like a politician. <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> nothing about moving three Mexico, minute answer of nothing. nothing about a band. <laughs> okay. Who do I really like right now? Um, let me look at my Spotify. Oh man, man here we I, go. Who am I looking oh. to? Because. Dude, you know what you should do is create a CTO playlist on oh, Spotify. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We could listen I to it in the tractor. I already got tons of ideas yeah. about doing that. Yeah. Yeah. Like there getting people's submissions coming in. I think we already do something like that. Yeah. We have some playlists that are curated by some people. So I started a deal on Snapchat yeah. several years ago called uh, TRL. TRL, Tractor Request Line. Okay. And people snap me while I'm planting or harvesting or whatever and – Hey, play this song. Hey, play that song. And I then I made a. Actually, Elena helped me make because I didn't know how hot. It says to Elena. Make, on yeah, it, yeah, to make a playlist on Spotify that's got it's got over ten hours worth of music. Okay, and it's yeah. everything, man. From you do a lot of country driving. to there's some John Deere stuff. But then, mm-hmm. man, you could find me listening to rap, country. I mean, I could mm-hmm. even listen to like some metal music. Okay. You know, whatever. Yeah. Indie. I love Zach Bryan. Mm-hmm. My favorite right now. Yeah, and you got to be careful. With your tractor <laughs> radio. Dave, Dave had it on at one of his auctions in the background. and uh, uh, A vulgar song. Yeah, Come I on. can't even say uh, it. And, and, and my wife is like, is this that? She about tackled no! the speaker. And she's like ready to tackle the speaker because it's like live on the internet and it's live to the whole crowd. And I got a bunch of 80-year-olds there in the crowd. And, and one of his songs comes up on my Spotify, this Bluetooth and my... Yeah. <laughs> the so- hey. Record sale that day, that was the recipe for it, man. It got everyone going. Oh, <laughs> man. <little> edgy. <laughs> it, was, it was interesting. So did you find one? Yeah, I got, I got a couple now. It's, uh, it's such a tough question, man. When you ask somebody, I feel like I always kind of freeze up. Yeah? I like to ask people, like, what, what genres? But bands. I like Current Joys, I like a surf rock band. Okay. Uh, Bennett Coast. He's a guy who grew up, you know, pretty close to me in my area. I love sporting local artists. Uh, Alex Sucks. This dude, kind of grungy guy from uh, Colorado. Um, Mac DeMarco, super indie kind of. I've never heard guy. any of these. No. Yeah. But I'm, I'm um, excited to look, look them up mm, now. I've um, never heard of indie. What's indie? Indie is uh, basically just independent. So if you're just in oh, your room okay. and you make music by yourself it's, it's not like indian music uh, that's what i was thinking the entire from. time yeah, so it, 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 it's like it's alternative like, rock. all right i'm gonna be yeah. that i'm gonna be the old balls it i'm gonna ask here i saw the glimmer in his eye it's like no you're not dancing around mm-hmm. a campfire you're not. <laughs> got it yeah mm-hmm. that's great that's how about great. you guys what do you listen to uh, whatever my daughters have uh, going on, kids it seems like. No, we're beyond kids <laughs> pop. We certainly still get a lot of Disney soundtracks. Uh, unfortunately, there's Taylor Swift that gets played quite a bit. But if I was to choose, I would probably go uh, classic rock or modern country. So like a couple bands. So for me, uh, I've we got to see Hardy perform down in Texas mm-hmm. at the Commodity Classic. And I didn't know ne- much about him before that, but he's kind of been my kick lately. It's All just right. something to really get me... If I if I want to get some energy built up, like Dave was referring to at his auction, uh, Hardy's good. But then uh, my family's always been a Queen fan. Okay, uh, it's kind of a, a go to or Eagles. So just yeah, throw nice. some of that in there. I like stuff that makes you think, like Drake White, Chris Stapleton, uh, Chris old school, old school country okay. um, is where I go with. Yeah, Chris All Stapleton's right. one of the most talented people. He yeah. has to be on the planet. I mean, yeah. three piece band. In a stadium, that's all he has up there. Three piece mm-hmm. band and just entertains everyone. They got like that Drake White. He's my new favorite. He's got like soulful, soulful guy can sing, right? Big time. Yep. And I'd be like probably Zach Bryan, Tyler Childers, probably mm-hmm. my two favorite <clears throat> right now. But I can look. I can go back and listen to some old George Jones country. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. It just it's like about my mood, man. Yeah. I even love like it depends where we're at because if we go like out to a club or something, then I'll put course, on like freaking Despacito yeah. and the radio on freaking and just to get down? like yeah Why like yeah. like feel like I'm on an island or something, man. I can mm-hmm. do anything. Yeah, one of my favorite things to do is brother-in-law has a jukebox in his entryway, and oh, sweet. just you go back and, and I know all the songs. You know, is that something that I'm gonna pick on my Spotify? No, but that's still one of the best things to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. 
So one thing, Jen, when we got to interview her, she said, I want somebody as a CTO that can like find their way onto a field at a football game. So like I'm picturing you at the Super Bowl, like getting a John Deere Gator and driving it across the field and <laughs> doing a burnout Straking. or something. Like <laughs> he's gonna run across like, in his John Deere underwear. I need I need that in your mind, like <laughs> donuts at the Super Bowl. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not afraid to just, you know, turn on the charm and let loose. I mean, you're I mean, you're a good looking dude. You look like you should be wow. on uh Outer Banks. Is, <laughs> is, is what it, like so after this, I'm oh, pretty sure funny. you're probably going to get a role on something like that. <laughs> Maybe John Deere will come out with a show. Yeah. I yep. did I did do uh theater in high school. Really? Yeah. Ooh. I did all four years. I always Mus- wanted musical to do that. theater. Always yeah. wanted to do that and it felt like you had to pick between like the arts or mm. sports. Even though I hung out with everyone, man, I played saxophone until I was in tenth grade, and then kind of had to make a choice to, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. But I love that. I wish I would have. So, what's your yeah. girlfriend think of the job? Oh, she's so happy. For she's me, like, man. you're employed. You're tall. You're dark. You're handsome. You're good. <laughs> I'm one of those things. Yeah, okay, one yeah. of those things. All right. <laughs> Wait, which uh, one? <laughs> uh, very excited for me. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. Is she in college? She just graduated as well, so she's in uh, Spokane, which okay. is Eastern Washington. Uh, now, looking for jobs, making art um, back in Seattle. Yeah, she's an artist as well, so we totally leveled on that. But she's more of a digital artist. Uh, she can draw, she can paint. I can't do any of can those she, things. Can she design T-shirts? Oh yeah, oh yeah. So oh, she yeah. screen prints as well. Ooh. Uh, so yeah, you can custom we, make those posters. Jesus, this interview is really we suck at swag or mm. drip, as Dave yeah, says. Yeah, drip. The, the See, new I was drip. up on that. But yep. these just came in the mail yesterday. This is our first try at being uh, art artistic, kind of. Yeah. I would say. You guys made these? Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Nice. I like that one. That turned out. Pretty I mean, good. we these knitted are, these them are ourselves. Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> I, t- I totally we got thought wool you. from the guy. That well, was I don't know if there's any wool in these. Yeah, they are. They are melanoma. Protectant, so they're SP or 50 U- SPS yes. UV, okay. UV yep. or whatever yep. it is. I totally thought you guys went to the store together and picked these out. No, no, no. no this is our our, our, our logo, brand new logo, Farm yep. for Profit. Actually, yeah. that's the old, the three tried the old logo and the, the new logo, logo yeah. and mm-hmm. the new logo on it. So what? Uh, let's go off base here, like random questions. Do you? Uh, what's the coolest piece of equipment you got to see at Deer? Everybody's gonna want to know on the internet. Coolest piece. I think the excavator was the most fun. Okay. Because I got to pick up some blocks and move them around and just be super hands-on. Yeah. But driving the sprayer was... was I saw you eyeball, and we were there looking at the sprayers, and I'm, like, geeking out on the triple nozzle body and how it'll pick which side where mm-hmm. it's seeing the spray. And you're like, man, this son of a buck is big. I'm yeah, just, like, yeah, looking at it to see how tall the tires <laughs> are. And I'm thinking there's so much technology here. Mm-hmm. But... Yeah, to the person yeah. that maybe hasn't seen it, it's it's big. Yeah, it, it's and, big, and it's super technologically advanced. I mean, did you think farmers were a bunch that. of overall? Did you have a preconceived notion that agriculture was like guys in overalls that uh, with a pitchfork? Or no, no. I mean, I worked with farmers <laughs> in right. college uh, a good amount, but they were smaller farmers. Yep. So they had tractors, but they had nothing that large scale. So seeing it in person was was really cool for me. What do you think the biggest gap? is for your demographic about farming? I just don't think they know where their food comes from. Mm-hmm. I don't think they know how their roads are built. Right. And do you think they care? Do you think yeah, they that's, care? That's, that's one of the and, arguments. And the reason I have this argument with him is because my wife says, oh, can you believe they don't know, uh, you know where their beef comes from, but they know what a Louis Vuitton purse is. Like, well, you don't know the difference between Louis Vuitton, Kate Spade, and, and Coach. Mm-hmm. So everybody hones in on what they know. Farmers hone in on what mm-hmm. they know, but the rest of the world might not care. You mm-hmm. guys give me crap about wearing Puma shoes. I didn't even know these were Puma shoes until you told crap. me they were Puma. Oh, whatever. Look at oh, that Puma hat up there. And- well, what, what brand has done, has made an effort or person to make those people care or show them why? feel like some have tried, but maybe McDonald's. fallen short. Everybody knows what the Golden Arches are. But they did that, that about ag, though. Yeah, that's no, I don't know that there is one, but if there was just a brand, I was trying to think of any brand out there. in general. Any brand out there that have tried to share their mission to the whole world so they know what they do. But the, that's, that's some of the most silence this podcast has had in a long time. We don't know. It's tough. 
Do you have one? Do you know a brand that has? John Deere. There you go. John Deere has been at the top of branding for a long time. Mm-hmm. Not in just ag. We need a golden right. arches for deer. I mean, they got the deer, of course. Right. That is their golden arch. Well, you said it earlier. Everybody's got a different deer story. They're connected to it somehow, even though it might not be that their grandpa farmed or that they drove a tractor or something. It might be a lawnmower. Right. Or you just might have been or a kid that plays with of, yeah, a piece of a toy. Yep. Toy. Ertle. Just right. like a real thing, only my, smaller. My sister obviously grew up on a farm with, with me, but she, you know, we got in to hang out, and her pacifier clip has a John Deere tractor on it. Oh, that's awesome. Like, I did see a TikTok video. Awesome. How far does John Deere branding copyright go as a hose in a some store? Hose. Like a garden hose, like a little John Deere handle on yeah. it. I'm like, who approves this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, apparently I was talking to some of the construction guys, shout out Thomas, at the uh, creator yeah. days, and his go-to shovel is like a John Deere shovel. Really? He'll just pick up down at the Ace Hardware. I'm like, John Deere, like, I asked some people on my team, do we make shovels? And they're like, no, nah, we just stamp just our, our name. <laughs> we just stamp our name. It's a true, it's a true temper, but yeah. my God, we put our name on it. But on, a, on the best product, so. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, I like that. What are they not on? We need, like, an iWatch. Ooh. A Deere watch. Oh, we mm. get to interview uh, Neil Dahlstrom, and I'm going to ask him, because I have some John Deere watches from the years. Yeah. I'm... I'm Excited to find not just the tractor history, but the brand history. You mean a Deerlix, I mean, like a Rolex, but <laughs> yes, for Deer? absolutely. Mm-hmm. I went to the world headquarters for the first time uh, a couple days ago, and I don't know if you guys have been there. We before. had to the parking lot in there. Okay, <laughs> but inside they have the most impressive collection of art dating back, you know, to the 1800s. Right, all over the building. I think that's the coolest thing ever because the, the brand history is really that deep. Yep. Yep, that is cool. We need to get some of that for the studio. Do they pull your shirt out of the 70s archive? <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> Shots yeah. fired. No, Interesting thing about the whole fit, actually. This is all, I love the all fit. new. I, had to, I went to Dick's and just went on a rampage and got some golf gear because I don't golf. But this shirt in particular, you know the rapper Macklemore? Yes. Yeah. 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 I'm going to pop some tags. So, yes, he is a huge golfer, and he's from Washington. Okay. And he lives on some, he's got some properties on the islands out there and just golfs all the time. So he created his own golf brand called Bogey Boys. Oh, oh that's him? Yeah. Bogey I had no Boys idea is him. He created him. it. <laughs> and we got the local shop like right there. So I went in there and I got this. See, yeah, I'm trying to look good. See, these are uh, young and Sunday crew. Yep. And then there's Sunday swagger. It looks good. Bogey they stand Boys. out. Those Thank are like you. the three that I've seen. Yeah. Matches I, that. I wanted that hat. We were at John Deere uh, Des Moines Works and there was two of those hats. They got taken, and I wanted one. And you got me a varsity jacket. I did. I get you. I got you the varsity jacket, though. <laughs> you got it. Did you get a varsity jacket too? No, I got no, the, you, you the got jersey. The, the jersey. The you jersey got the jersey. Yeah, that looks sweet. He probably yeah. just gets the comp at all. We had to buy it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had to buy it too, man. Uh, did, did it say how much did I make a year? Uh, all right. Here yeah. we go. <laughs> Health insurance. Who needs that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I got. The, I got drip. That's cool. Uh, well, but this will be out on the TikTok shop. Cool. Yeah. Really. Mm-hmm. I'm glad that we got. I didn't to do think this. John Deere would have a TikTok shop. Why not? Yeah. That's Why a great not? idea. Yeah, it's exactly. They're rolling out some cool stuff, like really geared towards. I saw your shoes the one day. I want shoes are awesome. Yeah. New collab. Can I talk about that? Do it. The collab. So there, we're collabing with Skechers to make these boots that I was wearing. Yeah. Uh, and they got a bunch of different styles, a bunch of different colors, and so I got to get them unreleased. And I've just been wearing them around to all the work sites, man. Nice. You have your own like Air Jordan. That out? That's out already. Next month, they're releasing the the kids collection of the Skechers boots. Yeah, you're not no, wearing they're a kids uh, boot. No, no, yeah. they're not boots. They're they look kind of like Crocs. They're like oh, that kind of yeah, shoe. Like yeah. A, that, yeah, yeah. Kids love those. It's not going to be oh, yeah. parents love them too. You don't have to tie their shoes. It's not going to be Air Jordans. It's going to be Rexfords. <laughs> Ooh. I'm just going to tell you right now. I want some Rexfords. I, I'm going to tell you right now, This it's been stealing my CTO campaign because I had a promise that I was going to partner with New Balance. He did. He mm. did. And, and, you know, every John Deere mower you bought, you got a pair of dad shoes. You got a like, pair of dad shoes. <laughs> so now you're mm-hmm. going to come up with a Skechers one of those, too. Uh-huh. <laughs> <All right. laughs> Pre-grass stain. I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> I think we got you covered on that. All right. Yeah. Okay. I, I like it. See, man, mm-hmm. like could have been me. That's why I quit giving my ideas. Because <laughs> I knew <laughs> he, he stopped. For someone free. was taking like, them. Uh, now, <laughs> now you just just have him text you. you just yeah. text him. Mm-hmm. Be be mm-hmm. just fine. Yeah. That's well, cool. Rex, this has been a, a pleasure. 
Mm. We appreciate you sitting in here, taking the heat, the hard questions. Mm. I'm excited I think for we're pretty nice. Oh, oh yeah, this yeah. is awesome, man. I mean, I only shot one fire, and it was good. Yeah. <laughs> and I got, I got something for you guys. Oh, what? really? Something. Yeah, cool. Really? You sent me a DM. Oh, I did. I didn't oh. know if you remembered or not. Oh. I didn't know. Like, Corey okay, is, we got to get this on camera. Corey is <laughs> always asking these things. Here, take that one off the, off the stand. Why? So you can control it. Oh, this. Yeah. Is it not overheating anymore? Well, you got to turn it back on. Don't knock over another set of golf clubs. <laughs> That's like the it. freakiest thing. Yeah, I, that was, he, that was Kyle great. was going to have to clip that because I guarantee you could see that over Rex's shoulder. Just mm-hmm. It's going to be somebody standing next to it. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Screw. Get out the of my office. On there. <clears throat> yeah. All right. All right. Yeah, I got something for you. you. Sent me a DM telling me some of your favorite tractors. So I decided to go with the the brand new one. That's what we got here. Oh, it's yeah. Poly oh. Merclay. 9RX. Oh, that, that is awesome. Look at that. That's not out of vegan cheese? No, sir. <laughs> Fully baked and ready to go. Oh, my God. Yeah. Holy smoke. So mm. how does that work when you bake them? Because I saw you put uh, Bumblebee in a pizza oven, and that didn't work. Ah, uh, I burned it. Yeah. <laughs> you I know just, how many farmers are into molding clay now? <laughs> oh, my gosh. That's been cracking me <laughs> up. Let me see that yeah. thing. Check it out, man. That is really badass. Thank you. Of course, Set that is going to studio looks so the good. Studio. Yeah, on the bottom, I, I got the little CTO signature. Oh my that. gosh, yeah. there it is! Mm-hmm. Wow, thank you. That is going up on that the shelf. So cool. Yeah, man. And we need to get like a plaque or something for it. <laughs> we do, <laughs> you know. Hey, I've got his autograph. We can put this in the picture frame. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> right next to. It. That's cool. We got to take a picture yeah. in that other room in uh, front of that wall. We should. Yeah. With that, that. That's, mm-hmm. that'd be cool. So, yeah, we wish you uh, the best, Rex. I, like I said, I am sorry how Ag, you know, ushered you in. Uh, if anything, just take it that that's the passion that we have. They want know. to make sure you were tough enough. Sounds and, like you uh, are. <laughs> I, think, I think at the end they're going to end up loving you. So um, wish you nothing but the best and reach mm-hmm. out anytime. If you do come to Farm Progress Show, like I said, come to our after party. Come check out our studio. Uh, maybe we'll do a little small you know how's it going now or something mm-hmm. and and yeah i'd it's love great. to yeah you guys are great thank you so much for having me i'm honored to be here i can't wait to connect again yeah what a great spot to do it yeah mm-hmm. well listeners thanks for tuning in